uploaded a video about Jesus descending into the lower parts of the earth and preaching to the fallen angels in Tartarus. And I had two people so far post, no, he didn't go to hell. He said to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. So why are you saying that? Well, he didn't go to hell like the heresy Joyce Meyer and others, Kenneth Copeland, that heresy they preach, uh, in the sense they're saying he went to hell and was tortured for days. It's just ridiculous. It's not scriptural. But he did go to Tartarus, which is the place where the fallen angels were held in prison until they're released a little while, and then they will be judged permanently. Uh, so that does happen. But not only that, Jesus did a lot in the three days following his sacrificial death. So we're going to look at some of the things he did and maybe some things you didn't know um, happened around his resurrection. Ephesians 4, 9. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So you're going to see this instance in Ephesians 4, 9, 10, and 11. He did a lot of work. He did a lot of things, and we're going to take a look at what he did during those three days here. Ephesians 4.10. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Ephesians 4.11. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. So you see, he accomplished a lot. Now here's a verse in Peter where it talks about Jesus descending to preach to those fallen angels that God bound in Tartarus, which is the lowest part of the Greek mythological underworld. And it's the, the name of what they call the prison uh, where they were bound until their final judgment. They'll be released for a short period, and then God will deal with them permanently. So this is 1 Peter 3.18. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also... He went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. And we know that the fallen ones, the watchers, that made an oath on Mount Hermon in Genesis 6 to mate uh, with human women, Jude talks about them leaving their first estate, their habitation, uh, that is their, their oikaterion, it means their spiritual body, to manifest in a physical body, mate and have children with human women that created these, what the Greeks call the demigods, but Genesis says these are men of renown, um, mighty men of old, and they were worshipped as uh, gods. Uh, by the Greeks and the Romans and other pagan cultures uh, because that's from the pagan point of view. Those are the same principalities that God condemns in Psalms. Uh, it says, uh, you shall die like men. You shall fall like one of the princes because they ruled unjustly. So we see that they are bound in prison. In addition... I believe he also preached to the Old Testament saints, those that had died before Christ was crucified. Because all of the bulls and goats and animal sacrifices were just a shadow of Christ. That We can see that in the book of Hebrews where it says the law was a shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of the thing. So here in 1 Peter 4, 5, it says, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead, and quick just means alive, like the quick and the dead means living. To quicken something is to bring it to life. So we can see here he will judge the quick 
and the dead. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. So it's not the same account. It's not talking about the fallen ones here. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So people would ask, well, why did he preach to fallen angels? To get the keys to death, Hades, and the grave, and to proclaim, hey guys, you're not getting out of here. You're not going to win. I've already beat you. This is how he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So we see he descended to uh, preach to those entities. He descended to paradise and preach to the Old Testament saints. I don't know for certain if they were in a holding place until his resurrection, but I come to that conclusion for an interesting reason, and I'm going to show that to you in just a moment. Here's where Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord, and she doesn't even recognize him. She's so grief-stricken, and he's in his glorified self. He's still him, but he's glorified now. He's risen, and he has not yet ascended to heaven to the Father. So that is one, one reason, I believe, that the Old Testament saints were kept. It's called Abraham's bosom in the scriptures, but I think that's just mean, that's a slang, a a metaphor for being in the comfort and arms of the ancestors. It's just a way of saying he he's in the grave and he's joined his ancestors. I think that's what it means by Abraham's bosom, joining the ancestors, and uh, that there was paradise, but he had not yet, they, they could not yet, uh, uh, approach God because the sacrifice had yet, not yet uh, made them clean. That is my assumption. I do not know. Maybe paradise is in heaven, but at this point he had not ascended to the father, but we see that he preached to the dead um, that were men. It was clear, clear that they were men. So uh, we'll see. But Jesus says to her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. I just wanted to give you a reason why I come to that conclusion. It is biblical, not saying I'm absolutely right on it, because we don't actually know where paradise was located prior to Jesus making heaven available to all that uh, are in him. So he continues telling Mary Magdalene, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. And we know Jesus himself is God the Son. Uh, in the beginning of the word, the word was with God. The word was God. He preexisted as God manifest in the flesh prior to his incarnation. And this is confusing for some people, but it says that the Godhead is three yet one. This will just give you a little bit of joy. It tells us some more of what he accomplished, but you'll see why I read this. It, it's, it's relative to this. Hebrews 9, 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And I put this here, and I think I've put it all the way to verse 14, because it tells us that he offered his own blood. Now, in the Old Covenant, in Leviticus, you'll see where they offered blood of animals on the mercy seat, but only on one side of it. So I believe there's an ark in heaven, and the Lord offered his literal blood Regardless of what John MacArthur says, it's not his literal blood. But I believe he offered his blood on the mercy seat of heaven um, and obtained eternal redemption for us all through that. Now, that is just because it implies that. But maybe it was uh, here, and that, that is just a metaphor for what he accomplished on the cross. It's not literal blood. I don't know how that works, but that's why I'm... Putting that here 
because it's clear that he ascended to the Father after the end of the three days because Mary sees him resurrected there bodily. So I believe he had to go bodily to his father at that point. We'll continue with Hebrews 9.13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, Hebrews 9.14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, this is something a lot of people don't know. I believe the reason uh, I come to the conclusion that uh, paradise or Abraham's bosom or whatever you want to refer to it as uh, was where the Old Testament saints were kept and that it was in the earth at, at some point because he said to the thief on the cross, as the gentleman correctly said, uh, Sister Renee, it says clearly that today he would be with him in paradise. So how can you say he went to Tartarus? Uh, because he did both. He did both, as you can see. Uh, and it says here in Matthew uh, 27, 52 and 53, and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So I believe that they were kept there temporarily until his resurrection, till they could be given their bodily resurrection. It says right here, they came out of the graves and walked around in Jerusalem and people saw them. So, I think once he um, was resurrected, that that they were held there, and now they are able to get to heaven. They can go uh, to the Father, and, and Jesus is going to the Father. We know he did not go to the Father until after his resurrection, which was three days later. I love that part, though, where they get up out of the graves and walk around and were seen by many. A lot of people don't know that because it's just one obscure little verse. And I don't hear it talked about much. So, you see, Jesus accomplished a lot more than most people realize. And not only did he go to paradise and preach to the Old Testament saints, and uh, uh, those that were dead, he went to prison to Tartarus and and proclaimed his victory to to the enemy and he um offers his blood to the to the father he uh, ascends to the father bodily after the third day uh, uh the graves open up and people walk around Jerusalem and you can understand his uh, his accomplishment and why his sacrifice was sufficient. The justice of God was served. His wrath was was quenched. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ because of his obedience. It's through the obedience of one. And I, I think if people realized more what Jesus accomplished during his death and his burial, during that three days of his burial and his sacrificial death, if there was more teaching in this area, I believe the gospel would be better understood and received by more people. I really do. Um, it, it's very sad that people reject the finished work of Christ as enough. They still look to themselves where you got to live like this and you got to do like that. Well, that is rewarded and you can be chastised for it. But if you're walking in your flesh, it can bring death to you, an early death, and you'll be judged as men in the flesh, as it says. Uh, and we are supposed to allow God to work in us. So we can either quench the Holy Spirit, and we don't want to do that, or we can hear him and grow and be conformed in the image of his son right now, even in this battle with our fallen flesh. We can be willing to serve and live for the Lord like we should because that's our true identity. And we should walk in newness of life 
and alive unto righteousness. Thank you guys. Um, I hope I answered your questions in the comments and God bless you.